What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Project Smart video. The house is almost complete. It's about that time. We're going to install our surround sound for the theater. So literally it's about that time. I mean, we got final coats of paint up. Gotta put the speakers up. They told me, Vic, it's time for the speakers to go up. Let's fill these holes. And it's about that time to get this shit done. Real quick, I'll go over what's going on, what speakers I got, why I chose it, and let's talk about how we're gonna install it and what the final outcome is at the end of this. Now I'm missing a couple of components, but real quick, you can kind of see the main features of it. Right now in our hands, right on the table, we do have seven speakers. This will be an eight speaker setup. So the idea of this is supposed to be a 5.1.2 setup, um, or it could be a 7.1 setup, but we are aiming for 5.1.2. The .2 will equal the Dolby Atmos experience. Uh, just to give you a quick background, there's a lot of ways you can configure it. We are running an Onkyo uh, receiver, which I'll show you later on. But basically, there's a lot of ways you can set up your speakers. I wanted to configure my setup for Dolby Atmos because that is now the newest technology. What that basically means is that there will be two overhead speakers. Usually speakers are in front of you or behind you, but now Dolby Atmos is actually up above your head. The other way to do it is that they do um, uh, upwards firing speakers where basically the speaker is on its back pointing upwards if you don't have the option of what I did here, meaning you wouldn't be able to install it in the ceiling. Real quick, I'll explain what's going on. I'll turn the camera around because you guys don't like self mode, but let's take a look at the holes I made, what's going on, let's talk about the speakers and all that. So before we get into the actual speakers, let's take a look at the configuration. Again, a 120 inch screen using the Xiaomi Mija projector. We're gonna go into that later on, but real quick, let's look at the speaker setup. I have my left speaker, my right speaker, and a center speaker. This is facing us. This is basically our forward facing speakers. Then in the back of the room, we have two backs, left and right, that's surround sound. And then to finally cap it off for Dolby Atmos, it is right over the couches that are gonna be here. There's two speakers for Dolby Atmos. The last speaker you don't see, which is the point one, is the subwoofer. Basically, that's gonna add the bass to everything. As far as the speaker setup on this, I did go with the Klipsch series. It's not really a series, meaning it's a buy one kit. You can find that on like Amazon. I didn't do that. I actually went on eBay because in all honesty, when I was younger, I had a, a surround sound setup, and honestly, we didn't really use it to like the advantage. So I wasn't gonna go out and get a $5,000 sound setup. You could do that. I honestly went the cheapest route Everything you probably see here, the speakers, the subwoofer, not including like the receiver, I probably spent, I would say about $1,800. So I bought it on eBay. There was a guy selling these on eBay. They were brand new, but I believe it is an older, older model. So you can see real quick, these are the four speakers that are going in the ceiling. So this is two Atmos speakers and two rear surround sound left and right. If you look very carefully, they are all the same exact speakers. They will try to sell you like specific speakers for Dolby Atmos. In my eyes, that's all BS. We are running the CDT3650-C. These are in-ceiling speakers, so you do need to cut the hole in it. I don't remember the circumference, the diameter of it, but they are pretty big. Um, I'll probably try to see if I have the manual to it. I think it was a 12 to 14 inch on that so these are the surrounds so in the ceilings dolby atmos and surround for the face the front facing two different types we have our left and our right which is the r3650 w2 it's very important to put that two same thing with this series there is a two at the end of it um these are left and right and then the center channel is a little bit bigger that is the r5502 w2 so there's our seven speakers out of eight. Again, we are missing the subwoofer. I'm gonna install that for the final, final step. Now real quick, just looking on my phone cause I'm too lazy to screenshot it. We could see basically what I spent. Figure 200 bucks. This is the 5502, that's the center speaker. My subwoofer, which is a big uh, 12 inch, I spent 300 bucks. The um, ceiling speakers, those four all together came out to 539 and the two um, left and right 
uh, for the wall that came out to 400. So uh, doing the math real quick, four, figure six, this is really um, 950, uh, 1011, 1250, 13, 1450. So you spend about 1500 bucks again on the clip setup that you see here. The real big selling point on this specific in-ceiling speaker was that the tweeter is directional, so you could actually point it in the way that you wanted. That was a big selling point because the big thing was that my Dolby Atmos setup, it's not exactly where the couch is. It's, the couch is gonna be a little bit to the left, so I will be able to point downwards. Also notice here, my ceiling is sloped. It's a cathedral ceiling. So if I didn't have the adjustable tweeter, that tweeter would have been just been pointing downwards to where no one is whereas the tweeter now we're going to be able to lift it up and point it towards the couch just a quick back thing again um purchase the speakers we ran the wires in the ceiling i ran those uh, with the help of the construction workers that were working every set has its own wires and then this will be central command where the receiver will be so basically, again, we have a wire going up across behind this wall and then down into the whole central command right here. I wish I knew the diameter of the speakers and the, the I wish I knew it, but these were pretty big. I know the center channel, that was about a 16 inch hole. Uh, it literally just reached from um, stud to stud. So 16 inches figure about 18 inches. I did have to actually cut the stud out. Luckily, I got very lucky. This was the center of this whole wall and I didn't have to do too much damage to that stud. So that, that we got lucky. When I first made the hole in that one, there was a stud right in the middle. So the guys had to fix up the holes. But now basically we are perfectly centered and ready to rock. We're gonna put the speakers in. This way, at least the speakers are all done. And then we will come back after I have everything set. Just real quick guys, before I put the speaker up, I have already done the Atmos and I've already done the wall ones. We'll take a closer look. I just wanted to go real quick and show you how cool like the design is on this. Basically again, it's an in wall speaker. Let me take the cover off, the grill off, which is another cool unique feature because it is a magnetic grill. I'm doing this one handed. So the grill is magnetic, but I just want to show you real quick the, again, it's very magnetic, but basically how the screws work on this. Take a look at this. So the screws are on the face. And we'll take a look at this one real quick. As you can see, that's the screw. Once you put this in the ceiling and start drilling, the little flap here actually hooks out to the drywall, the sheetrock, and then clamps down on it. I was very like impressed. I'd never seen that before, but really cool. Like it literally will bring it right up to the sheetrock. I've never seen a design like that, and that was just mind blowing to me. So again, once you put the 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 impact the drill on it the little flap will come out and then drop down and then hook up to the drywall all right so we officially have our speakers in so check it out that is the right channel we got the center channel and we got the left channel there so center left right up top i do have my atmos speakers up top i did put the magnetic grills on it I left the plastic on this because uh, we have to touch up the paint a little bit around the corner. So I left the plastic on this, but I did leave the surround back open just to show you what I meant about the directional tweeters. So again, we do have the back right, trying to get a good lighting on it. I might have to go up to the actual tweeter, but I'll go up on it. As you can see here, tweeter pointed as far out as possible. Again, this is directional, so you could actually spin this. And right now we're gonna put this as far up, pointing that way. Again, the couch is that way. Zoom on out. Again, tweeter pointing as much as we can towards the couch. So again, stock, if you didn't have the tweeter directional, it would have been literally like that. That's how it matches up with that. So it's just pointing down. We're gonna point this right on out to the couches. All right, guys, so when I started this video, we were in the progress of finalizing everything. We are literally done with this house and we are ready to show off and really show you the final stuff. We're gonna be looking at the projector on another video. We're still talking about the surround sound setup. Real quick, just wanna show you guys real quick the subwoofer setup, the Onkyo, and kind of do a sound test, I guess. So again, finally, the house is complete. I'm going around now doing all the proper videos. We're gonna do the video on the projector yet. 
it's not really in its final stages we have to kind of adjust but again we are focusing on the audio on this uh so real quick i didn't show you guys before but this is the subwoofer this is an accus tech found it again on ebay i believe it's a 12 inch subwoofer that thing shakes the house they were doing construction like final stuff and i did a sound test and all the workers ran and was like oh my god is the house falling down so that thing is super loud um has a lot of like control knobs going on back here to set up however you want it but the final piece was the onkyo this is an onkyo 4k receiver the exact numbers on that the exact numbers on that is a tx nr 686 it has a lot of inputs two four six eight i think it's like 10 inputs um again almost like final stages we got the projector set up the Ankyo set and right now I do have as a Christmas gift for my wife she did give me the Nvidia Shield Pro so in all honesty this whole setup with Dolby Atmos would not be possible without that without the Nvidia Shield this Atmos setup would not be possible meaning you do need a device that will bring out and I guess output Dolby Atmos and the Nvidia Shield does that. Your regular cable box won't put out Atmos. A PlayStation 4 does not put out Atmos. You do have to get the right equipment. So the Onkyo does have Atmos speaker inputs and the Nvidia Shield is gonna be my main go-to movie kind of media player because it does have Atmos built into it. Now the way this is set up is basically all the video inputs go into the Onkyo receiver and then it's one HDMI cable that goes out into the projector. So it is, you know, I don't know, 10 inputs in and then one out. I am experiencing a little bit of a headache with the Onkyo. For some reason, um, the cable box, if the audio is coming out of the Onkyo is a very loud hum. It's only really with the cable box. I'm still trying to fine tune it. I was trying to also, I did have a little minor headache with the Nvidia Shield, but I kind of was able to stop that hum because I went into a settings for a CEC. Um, so that was a big deal. Right now the Nvidia Shield went into sleep mode. So that actually turned off our Onkyo. Again, this is all like CEC powered. So once the device turns on, the Onkyo turns on. And I do have this set to like zero when it turns on. Again, sometimes when I play like with the cable box and you know, if I set it to the last volume, it does be a loud hum. Still trying to figure it out, but it is kind of a known issue with the Onkyo, meaning some devices that it takes, it will give a hum. So as of right now, my next step to test is that this does do optical in. So I'm gonna see if I could do cable box, audio, optical, into that instead of doing audio through hdmi enough of me blabbering let's take a real close look again i do have the nvidia shield set to the bd dvd again set to zero um i just did like a little kind of um get together with the fam but for me i have really bad like hearing so like i put this up to like 60 and i thought it was low and all my in-laws were like oh my god this is insanely loud and it was cool. So right now I do have a USB stick in which I downloaded all Atmos kind of promo videos. And this one called Nature's Fury is like the best kind of way to see how the surround sound works. You're not gonna really get the full effect like cause of the speaker, uh, cause of the microphone. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. Powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Okay, microphone pointed away from the screen right now. Whether the soundscape system you have seen. Fury. 
So again, it is pretty insane. Um, I did in the beginning of the video, I did have the audio coming out of the projector a little bit. So you did kind of hear a mismatch. Um, but again, like if you're gonna watch movies, we turn the projector audio off and leave it strictly to the surround sound. It gets loud in here, like it's nuts. Um, I actually had like a piece of paper by the subwoofer when I first tested it. And there's so much intake on air, it sucked in the paper, it was nuts. But again, soon is gonna be the video of the Xiaomi Mi Zhao projector. People are nuts for this, 128, 120 inches on this. Again, shocking stuff. I know you won't be able to get the full effect on the microphone, not to mention the microphone right now is pointing to me. It's not going that way. Um, so you might've been able to hear how it is, but again, a budget surround sound setup. You don't need crazy amount of money to get a nice sound system. And in the beginning of the video, you saw the price breakdown, totally worth it. It's insane. Again, 7.1 or 5. 0.2 for the Atmos 0.1 subwoofer. Again, stay tuned for the video on the projector. I'm gonna shoot that tomorrow. A lot of interest on it. It is an amazing projector. The picture, it's insane. It does shoot 4K. It is putting out 4K. Um, again, with the NVIDIA Shield, it does show me everything that I need to know. Stay tuned for that video that's gonna be coming up soon. But again, we finally have our main kind of entertainment area set in stone. There you have it again, Project Smart. You know we got her. Alexa, turn off the kitchen lights. And again, this is movie mode right here. Okay. Big thing, I will have to program all of the remotes and everything with the Harmony. That's coming up later on again. We just finalized this house. We are actually living in the house now, just trying to enjoy the house a little bit and then going back into final details. There you guys have it. Again, I'm gonna definitely do something on this Nvidia Shield. This piece of equipment, your media streamer, you need this. Forget your Fire TV, forget that Fire Cube. The Shield is the way to go. It is mind boggling how this device works. That is it guys, VicVP, Gamecase Arcades, Project Smart. Catch me on the next one.